Welcome to this uh, lecture on uh, the cultural, political, and philosophical traditions of Japan. The intention is to give uh, a few um, uh, indications of uh, how interesting Japan is, but also, uh, also give a, a slightly different picture than the usual one, which I think is that Japan is an insular country somehow uh, insulated from the rest of the continent and uh, living its own life, so to speak. In my view, uh, Japan is very much um, um, a country that is connected with the, um, with the continent, has always been and is a, a very important uh, player in, in, on the global scene as well. I will go through the whole uh, history. In fact, uh, only uh, certain points, certain um, uh, features, certain um, uh, happenings during the history. Uh, and of course, this will be over 2000 years. So uh, obviously I will have to skip a lot of things, but um, I have chosen a, a few uh, things that I find very interesting. And I will start by, by um, the pointing to the first uh, period uh, that um, historic period or, or prehistoric period that Japan experienced. It's called the Jomon period. It's uh, so called uh, because of its um, the, the, where the site was where they discovered where uh, pottery early pottery has been discovered and the pattern uh, of that pottery. And as you can see on these uh, pictures. There were very elaborate uh, pictures uh, or elaborate patterns from the late uh, Jomon period. The early Jomon period had more uh, simple uh, patterns and simple uh, ceramic or urns, uh, so to speak. And the, the period, Jomon period, was a period that began perhaps 15,000 years ago, 11,000 years ago, or even 20,000 years ago. No one really knows. And it was, <clears throat> it has some some uh, characteristics that were very similar to uh, the where you can that you can find with the Siberian uh, minorities or the Altaic uh, uh, minorities in, in in Siberia, and also uh, on the Korean Peninsula. So it has been from the very beginning very much connected with with that the, with those cultures, I would say. Um, and one of those features is that uh, uh, they had uh, the shaman as a very important um, actor in the uh, village community. This was also the case uh, in Japan. Uh, and uh, you can, you, there have been many findings that, that point uh, to that fact. Um, the early uh, people, the people that were living on the Japanese islands were not the um, uh, people that you find today, they were the early people were various um, tribes and, and various um, uh, ethnic minor or ethnic uh, groups that more resembled uh, the ones that you had uh, in eastern part of Siberia. And you can see that uh, from the, the patterns that they were using in their clothes, the, the uh, tattoos they were using, and also from, from shaman uh, practices. Uh, the early historical um, uh, chronicles of Japan, the first one being the, the so-called the, Koji, the Kojiki, the, the um, records of ancient matters from, uh, it was uh, published or, or it was finished in, in uh, 712. Uh, it, it describes uh, how people from the continent arrived in the uh, Japanese islands and con were confronted with people living there already. And they, the, the indigenous people were pushed further up north through the, uh, the mainly the uh, large uh, island called the, the Honshu Island in Japan. And they were described as, as earth spiders and, and, and other uh, derogatory terms uh, in those chronicles. And it was very obvious that uh, the, the chronicles described how the people from the continent pushed the, the indigenous people uh, away from where they, they came. 
this is a, a, a map showing uh, the Altaic uh, languages, how they were uh, spread, uh, have, have spread um, over the, uh, the continents, and also probably uh, that uh, how uh, the uh, Ainu language was somehow connected, the early Ainu, uh, Ainu language was connected with the, uh, some of the other languages. It, the, the, uh, how the Japanese language and the Korean language were related is something that is uh, still being researched. Of course, I think there's a, a connection between the two. And there might be also a connection be between the uh, Japanese, Korean, and, and other Altaic languages. Um, but this map uh, is really is here to show how many ways uh, there were for people to move to the Japanese islands early on. In fact, very early, the what is today called the Japan Sea, uh, and the, what the Koreans called the Eastern Sea is uh, was a, a huge uh, lake, in fact, and and you had um, possibilities of of go, walking uh, over to the Japanese islands. The uh, Jomon period was replaced, but uh, by a, a, a period called the Yayoi period. Again, this is. Uh, named from the sites that where you found the various objects. And the Yayoi period is a period pointing to the fact that a lot of people came from the continent across the Korean peninsula over to the uh, Japanese island called today Kyushu, the northwestern part of Kyushu. And what they did, they brought with them uh, iron production, bronze production, uh, weapons, uh, horses, uh, things that were, did not exist uh, before uh, on, in, in Japan or on the Japanese islands. Japan still does not exist as, as a state formation. But there were also many objects that pointed to a connection with the, the Chinese culture. For instance, the bronze mirror that you can see to the, to the right here. Um, the, the, it is very obvious that um, the um, people co coming from the continent uh, established a new culture. And what was new was also uh, agriculture. Um, and as I said, iron production. There was no specific bronze uh, age in Japan or, uh, or a specific iron age. It all came at the same time. These people also brought horses that didn't exist before. And they brought other uh, things that, that did not exist in Japan. Very uh, specific for this period it was also the, the fact that uh, new, kind, new kind of villages were, um, were established. And the picture here of the so-called torii, or the gate to a Shinto shrine, is interesting because of the fact that it's called torii. Torii means uh, resting places for birds. And bird symbolism was very important, both in uh, Siberia and also in, on the Korean peninsula uh, as a kind of symbol of uh, shamanism. Uh, in fact, in, in, there have been um, Siberian graves uh, where uh, uh, wooden birds have been placed to guard the, the, uh, the, the, the graves, uh, so to speak. So this the fact that the gates to the Shinto shrines are called Tori, I find uh, to be an in interesting fact pointing to this relationship between um, the uh, shamanistic pra practices in, you know, on the continent and in Japan. Perhaps also something that the, the Aino people, the early Japanese people uh, were, were using. Um, the sorry, the Yayoi period was followed by uh, the so-called Kofun period. Kofun simply means the large tomb um, period. And this is another, uh, not in, well, perhaps an, you can say an innovation, but um, during uh, the, the third century and, and uh, the following fourth and fifth century, there were a, somehow a violent <clears throat> or, a, or a more violent uh, in, uh, migration or invasion uh, 
of people coming from the, the Korean Peninsula. Uh, and they brought with them uh, new kinds of weapons uh, and new kinds of, of uh, production, uh, iron production and so forth, more sophisticated uh, ways of, of, um, of producing uh, tools and, and weapons. And this brought or, or caused uh, a, a very uh, political uh, development, a, a typical development that was uh, characterized by uh, political conflicts between different clans. The, the, the Kofun, the large Kofun, the, the large um, tombs uh, were, of course, tombs for, for a village, not just village heads, but clan heads or perhaps kings. And uh, they indicated <clears throat> that uh, the, the uh, a, a beginning a st state formation was uh, in fact uh, had already started and uh, were beginning to be finalized and one can say that there was a state formation uh, definite state formation in japan in the seventh uh, century at least uh, 645 is, is mentioned sometimes but probably there was also uh, a state formation already in the uh, 6th century. Uh, the Kofun period is also interesting because <clears throat> it had on certain graves uh, what is called Haniwa, uh, clay figures uh, that were placed uh, as a symbolic guard around certain uh, graves, but also as uh, uh, symbols of, of what kind of person uh, you had in those graves. And there uh, somehow is, <clears throat> are um, uh, indicative of the influence also from, from, the, from the Chinese uh, culture. Uh, there you had, of course, the, for instance, the, the first emperor, uh, the, the famous grave and the terracotta figures, more uh, elaborate, of course, than these. But there's somehow a connection between the, the way of, of burying important people together with uh, ceramic uh, or, or clay figures uh, to show the importance of the person uh, that was buried there. The, the Kofun period <clears throat> ended with a clear state formation. You, you could then talk about uh, Japan uh, in the early 7th century, but it was also a period where Buddhism uh, it was um, introduced uh, to Japan. And uh, not only one sect, but various uh, different schools or, or sects uh, were, came to Japan. With them, uh, the way to um, uh, create uh, statues, but also the way to, to uh, build um, uh, elaborate uh, structures uh, like pagodas and so forth and temple structures. Uh, it was a very interesting period <clears throat> where uh, a typically a, a, a heavily a Chinese heavy influence uh, was was uh, obvious. Uh, the, the state structure, the the, the literature, the the way of of, of looking at history, uh, all sorts of things had a Chinese character. The language, the written language was Chinese at this time uh, because there was no written Japanese language. This was followed <clears throat> by the Nara period when uh, <clears throat> the, the, um, the capital uh, was Nara uh, and uh, the Buddhist sects were very, very influential. It was also a period when where you had uh, the uh, early uh, Japanese uh, poets and, and, and Japanese uh, uh, other forms of, of, of literature uh, being um, uh, introduced or, 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 or shown. Um, the, uh, there was a very <clears throat> uh, a, a, a typical attempt to um, create a, a specific Japanese poetry uh, called waka or the the Japanese poetry simply, and you also during this period you also had the early <clears throat> collections of <clears throat> of of poetry. The most famous one called Manyoshu, which could be translated as the uh, collection of ten thousand leaves, uh, 
and and uh, this was a wide variety of, of poems uh, also very much um, uh, poems with uh, a romantic character uh, but they were the poems were written between uh, maybe year 600 and, and um, 750 or so it is said that the collection with over 4,000 poems uh, was uh, finished in 759 or there around. Um, it is also <clears throat> a period um, where the, the beginning of a new Japanese uh, way of writing a, a written Japanese language is being formed. In the beginning, one used um, Chinese characters uh, in, in various ways, or, or in two ways. One was to have Chinese characters with meanings, and one was to have Chinese characters uh, indicating the way they should pronounce, a phonetic way of using Chinese characters. And then they mixed those, the, the Chinese characters with um, uh, carrying a meaning and the Chinese characters uh, just indicating the, how it should be pronounced. And this, of course, was the reason for that was that the Chinese grammar and the Japanese language that had formed at this time were completely different. Uh, the Japanese language, as was I, as pointed, pointed out earlier, is probably a, an Altaic language with a completely different grammatical structure. So in order to use Chinese characters, they have to find ways to read them uh, in the Japanese way. And, the beginning was to use some characters phonetically, but then also they had some other symbols that could indicate how to restructure the sentence so it could be read in a Japanese way. This later led to uh, the inventions of the phonetic uh, alphabets uh, that are still used today, uh, mixed with, with Chinese characters in order to make it uh, possible to have a, a Japanese written language. The uh, Nara period uh, was the period when, as I said, when you had uh, important uh, Buddhist uh, sects establishing themselves in, in Japan. But those sects were also more and more uh, politically important. And they were so important, in fact, that the, um, uh, the rulers felt <clears throat> that uh, they had to move the capital because the, the influence from the, the Buddhist sects were, were too great. Uh, specifically, their political influence was, was somehow threatening. And the uh, capital was therefore moved to uh, Heian, which is, uh, which is called uh, Kyoto today. The Heian period began uh, with the um, the, the, the uh, transformation from, from Nara, uh, fr from the capital to, um, from Nara to, to Kyoto or Heian. The Heian period <clears throat> was really the, the period when the real or the, real, the sophisticated Japanese uh, culture emerged. Uh, now you had a, a Japanese written language very complicated, but still it was a Japanese written language. And you had still a Chinese influence uh, when it came to uh, the judicial system or the legal way of thinking and uh, also the cultural ideals and so forth. But it was uh, a period when a very uh, clear Japanese character in the culture uh, emerged. Also, uh, I think around uh, mid uh, ninth century, the uh, communication with, uh, with China somehow ceased for political reasons. Uh, and uh, up, up until that period, you had um, uh, many Japanese scholars and monks uh, going on, on uh, uh, embassies with embassies to China to learn from the, the Tang Dynasty uh, that was uh, dominating China at that time. But later in the Heian period, uh, this uh, ceased and, and uh, Japan was slightly isolated from, uh, from, from China. 
and uh, developed his own uh, culture. You this Heian period is also the period when you have the perhaps the first uh, novel uh, in the world uh, published, the, the Genji Monogatari, the, the um, uh, tale of, of Genji, uh, describing <clears throat> the, uh, the court life, but also uh, the struggles between uh, different clans. Uh, there was a, this was a period when the different clans or the different uh, family-centered uh, political groups uh, were uh, competing for power. You had an emperor, you had uh, a, a, an imperial house, but you also had uh, many different families uh, competing for influence in, in the court. Uh, of course, it is said that the, the first Japanese emperor came from, uh, descended from, from heaven 660 before uh, Christ. Uh, this was a, myth, a mythological uh, fact and not a real fact, but uh, during the Heian period, you definitely had an established uh, imperial house with an emperor. Uh, but you also had uh, a period, th this period was also uh, dominated by, by the clans, and they <clears throat> uh, established what was, so, what was called the, the Shoen system or the estate uh, system of various estate uh, having local power uh, on, in various places in, in Japan. Um, <clears throat> it was also a period when um, new Buddhist uh, schools or sects uh, were introduced, introduced uh, specifically the, the Tendai and Shingon sects, the esoteric, uh, two esoteric sects that had an enormous, no, enormous influence on later history, uh, specifically the, or especially the, the Tendai sect, uh, which established itself uh, in, on uh, Hiei-san, or Mount Hiei, northeast of, of Kyoto, uh, where they built the Endakuji, the uh, Endaku temple. And uh, over the years, over the centuries, in fact, uh, many of those uh, who studied at the uh, this temple on on Hiei-san became very influential. You also had monks that were um, aggressive at sometimes and and came down and actually more or less uh, acted as as military units. The Heian period ended uh, with the uh, defeat of the Taira clan by the Minamoto uh, clan. And the Minamoto clan, they moved to uh, Kamakura uh, <clears throat> and, and established uh, uh, a, a, a sh the first shogunate, the, the first uh, military rule uh, over Japan uh, with the shogun uh, as, as a center. The shogun simply means a, a general. And the, the so it was a a general that was uh, doing the, the um, had the real political influence, although the emperor still uh, remained in Kyoto. So you had, in a way, two capitals, the, the Kamakura and the um, uh, uh, and Kyoto, uh, the emperor in Kyoto and the shogun in Kamakura. But uh, if you one would summarize <clears throat> the period up until this point, you can say that and the Japanese history um, showed a confrontation between the indigenous, indigenous population and an immigrating Sino-based culture. There was also a confrontation between shamanism, which later developed in, into Shinto, uh, the Shinto um, uh, religion, and Buddhism, and also uh, Confucianism, which came with the Chinese culture and also became very important in, in Japan. Uh, the, the early indigenous uh, re religion later developed, which re later developed into Shinto, was uh, resisting the introduction of Buddhism, but um, later on they found ways to uh, exist side by side. It was a collision also bet between a Chinese judicial system, specifically the one, the Tang Dynasty system, and the domestic clan structures, 
and it was a period when the uh, Japanese written language developed out of the uh, Chinese written language. It can also be said that from this point, <clears throat> Japanese history uh, has been characterized by the, the two sides. Uh, one could be called the, the delicate side or the sophisticated uh, aspects of Japanese culture and the other, the violent side, the dominance of the political dominance of the, the, the military class and what that brought with it uh, in, in, in the form of, of using military power to, um, to stress your, uh, your arguments. The Kamakura period, as I said, uh, was a period where the capital of the political power moved to Kamakura. Uh, this happened in 1185. Um, and the, this period lasted until uh, 1333, uh, but, uh, and uh, it ended again uh, by the uh, uh, shogunate, the first shogunate uh, collapsing um, and an attempt by the, the emperor uh, at that time in 1333 to, to uh, restore political power to uh, to the imperial house. I'll, I'll get into that in, in, a, in a second. But the Kamakura period was not only a period when um, the, the uh, mil military dominated, it was a period when new Buddhist uh, sects were introduced to, uh, to Japan. And many of them were uh, sects that, that uh, in the, uh, put emphasis on repeating Buddha's uh, name or, or praising uh, Ami, Amitabha and, and so forth. Uh, during the Kamakura period, the two most important Zen sects were also uh, introduced, the Soto Shu or the Soto uh, uh, school and the um, uh, Rinzai uh, school. And the difference between these two uh, sects uh, were not very great, was not very great. The, the, they had different ways of, of uh, sitting when they meditated. Perhaps the most important uh, difference was that um, the Rinzai sect put uh, a lot of emphasis on uh, asking the, the uh, uh, the monks to, to uh, try to solve riddles that were really unsolvable, uh, the, the so-called koan, uh, simply ways of trying to uh, make the, the, the monks uh, go beyond lo logical thinking and transcend into new uh, dimensions. Uh, whereas the Soto uh, sect or the Soto school uh, put more emphasis on just sitting uh, and meditating. Uh, and of course, they were both using also uh, scriptures, uh, um, uh, quoting uh, various scriptures or reading aloud scriptures and, and during their, their, their services. But the main emphasis was on meditation for the, both of them. And they have survived until this, this day and are still very important. The, as I said, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the emperor tried to um, retake political power and this uh, happened in, in 1333. It was the emperor uh, Godaigo who uh, in the so-called uh, Kemu restoration tried to achieve uh, that, that to take uh, political power again. What the Kamakura rulers then did was to send uh, troops to Kyoto to try to uh, crush the, the restoration efforts. But uh, one of the uh, uh, generals, uh, Ashikaga, uh, he uh, simply uh, switched sides and said that he would support uh, the, the emperor's efforts. Then another uh, general and, and another uh, set of troops were sent to Kyoto and they also uh, switched sides. But this led to a conflict between the two military uh, forces and the Ashikaga uh, won. Uh, 
<clears throat> so the, the Ashikaga uh, established themselves with the shogunate in Kyoto. And then you had in Kyoto an imperial house and a shogunate uh, or a military ruler side by side, side in the same city. The Kamakura period was uh, also the period where you had the two uh, important uh, attempts by the Mongols to invade uh, Japan. One was in, in uh, 1274 and the other in 1281. Uh, it is said sometimes in, in modern day uh, discussions between Japan and China that China has never um, uh, invaded uh, Japan. It's only Japan that has invaded China. This is not true. Uh, with the Mongols came not only Korean troops, but also Chinese troops from, um, from in, uh, mostly uh, Zhejiang, uh, but from the, the Chinese continent, uh, continent, they sent by ship, uh, ships, uh, troops to Japan to um, cooperate with the, uh, the Mongols in trying to invade Japan. On both those occasions, the, <clears throat> the Japanese defense was aided by uh, typhoons. Uh, and the, the first attempt led to, um, uh, or both attempts led to the, to the ships uh, being destroyed and, and the, the, uh, uh, also the, 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 it became impossible for the Mongols to advance any further than, than just the, the first shorelines that they, they took in Kyushu. In, in uh, <clears throat> 1274, uh, some, the troops, the number of troops on the, Mo on the Mongol side and the Korean side was 23,000. Uh, I'm not sure what the number was, how many Chinese troops, but in 1281, it is said that um, there were 20,000 Chinese troops and 40,000 Mongol and Korean troops. And of course, since the Japanese um, were helped by the, the, the uh, violent storms that, that uh, destroyed the, the Mongol ships and the Chinese ships, the, the, um, they were called the events or the, the phenomena was called kamikaze, the um, divine winds that uh, helped um, uh, Japan. <clears throat> the, Kamaka, the Ashikaga period <clears throat> was uh, a very sophisticated uh, cultural or culturally very sophisticated. Uh, and uh, you could see that in, in architecture, in, in, uh, in literature, in, in, in many aspects of, of, of the Japanese culture. But it was also a period when uh, the clans became more and more independent and, and uh, tried to fight each other. Uh, one of the reasons was perhaps the establishment of the so-called shugo or guardians or local lords that uh, gained more and more power over their own uh, provinces. Uh, also, you had um, the introduction of the or the um, arrival of the Portuguese that uh, came to uh, uh, Tanegashima, an, an island called Tanegashima in 1543. With them, they brought the, the muskets uh, or the, the long uh, rifles that were very efficient in, in, in uh, combat, of course. The Japanese made their own uh, muskets uh, that were also, in fact, they were superior to the, after, after some years, superior to the Portuguese ones. But with the Portuguese also came Jesuits and missionaries. And this mixture of uh, using uh, very efficient weapons and also uh, using religion as uh, a way of, of arguing for, for the, what was efficient and new uh, became in, in a way a threat to uh, Japanese stability. Many, many local lords uh, Im immediately switched to, um, uh, to cr Christianity. Uh, and there was a period when in fact, uh, it looked as if 
Japan would become uh, Christian, but there were also those who opposed uh, the way that uh, Christianity influenced the, the Japanese way of thinking. And uh, so there was a resistance. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the, in, in 1467, before the, the, the Portuguese arrived and, and uh, 1477, there was an important um, uh, war, uh, domestic war that had its um, center in Kyoto. And uh, in fact, m much of Kyoto was um, destroyed in the 10 year fighting that took place at that time. The, um, Various artisans, uh, important people uh, in 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 literature, in in ceramics, and whatever, they found it best to to move to other parts of 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 Japan, and this had the effect that it could also influence other, and and develop uh, Japanese culture in, in other parts of Japan. But the the um, mostly it was very uh, destructive, and after the Onin War, after it ended in, in, or more or less ended in, in um, 1477. Uh, uh, Japan moved into a more unstable period of uh, internal strife or, or um, a civil war, in fact, uh, that lasted uh, more or less until uh, the end of the 16th century. And in the uh, 16th century, uh, in the end of the six, at the end of the 16th century, there was it was first a general called Oda Nobunaga, who um, were su quite successful in in um, uh, dominating uh, other or, or various parts of Japan, and 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 he began a unification. Uh, he was replaced by a general called um, Toyotome Hideyoshi who more or less uh, finished the, um, the unification of Japan again after the uh, destructive uh, civil wars. But he died of natural causes in, in 1598. Um, before that, he had a grand uh, strategy or a grand uh, plan to invade China. So he, in 1592, <clears throat> He sent uh, hundreds of thousands of 160,000, I think, uh, tr Japanese troops to invade uh, China. And he sent them to the Korean Peninsula. Uh, they advanced quickly uh, uh, through the Korean Peninsula, but were met with, with Chinese resistance uh, at the end of, of the, the peninsula. And they didn't manage to, to go any further. After several years, and also from uh, thanks to Korean resistance, uh, they uh, somehow were bogged down uh, in, in various parts of the Korean Peninsula. He tried again uh, towards, I think it was 1587, uh, to um, in, uh, invade uh, China via uh, Japan, uh, via Korea, and uh, failed. So uh, the troops uh, had to withdraw, but they they um, they did withdraw when when the news of the death of Toyo, Toyotomi Hideyoshi reached them. In and uh, so it it ended in 1598. Then there was again some some um, competition between uh, various uh, lords and and general or various generals over uh, which side should win and take power over the whole Japan, over the unified Japan. And uh, Tokugawa, uh, uh, a general called uh, Tokugawa uh, uh, won and established the Tokugawa uh, period or the Tokugawa regime uh, in 1600. Uh, it was finally uh, it finally managed to establish itself in 1615 after a, a siege in, in Osaka. But uh, the main battle actually happened, I think, in 1600, and then it's, it established itself in, in 1603. 
But here on this map, you can see um, the, the number of uh, provinces in, uh, in Japan. <clears throat> and uh, you can, some speak of, of a feudal system, but it was really a centralized uh, feudalism in that case. And after the uh, uh, unification, uh, the, the, uh, the split into uh, over some 200 uh, various provinces or kuni or, or actually um, um, some calling even countries, um, although more, the, it's more correct to call them provinces, uh, were um, there. And, and it, the system with a centralized power depending on uh, their a rule over uh, local lords uh, was uh, established. Uh, it's in interesting to, to see the, the, the size of Japan and Norway are roughly uh, the same, or they're structured differently. And uh, if you would uh, <clears throat> add or establish uh, over 220 or some 220 provinces in, in Norway, <laughs> you can imagine the complexity that would emerge from, from, from that. The Tokugawa period, or is also called the Edo period, because Tokugawa Iyoshi, as he was called, he moved <laughs> his headquarters to Edo which in the beginning was a, just a, a small fishing village, but later quickly developed into a large city. And Edo, of course, is uh, Tokyo, it's called Tokyo today. Tokugawa, <clears throat> the Tokugawa period was a period when um, after uh, several steps, Christianity was finally um, uh, forbidden or, or banned. Uh, in 1639 was the, um, the, the latest and most efficient uh, edict that, that um, banned Christianity. Uh, <clears throat> but the, uh, as, as a sign of how successful the, the um, Christian missionaries had been, uh, there was a um, uh, uprising, uh, the so-called Shimabara uprising uh, that took place in Kyushu uh, between uh, 1637 and, and 1638, um, they simply protested uh, that against uh, the ban on Christianity. This led to <coughs> over 37,000 people being executed. And it also led to uh, a very harsh practice of trying to reveal who is uh, a Christian and who is not. One method was to have people step on an image of Christ uh, in order to show that they didn't care. And those who refused were, were um, uh, said to be Christians and they were executed. <coughs> the Tokugawa period is very interesting because it, it, <clears throat> it, it was a period when actually a national, a kind of national isolation uh, uh, started and, and um, you had this, this self-imposed isolation over the whole uh, period. Uh, although uh, there were some, some uh, communication with the uh, outside world through uh, <clears throat> uh, Nagasaki and, and uh, where the Dutch uh, uh, were allowed to uh, trade uh, with Japan uh, at the, uh, uh, the De Dejima uh, trading station, uh, just uh, close to or outside, uh, or which is now inside Nagasaki. But also the Chinese um, traders were allowed to continue uh, with, a, with a regulated trade between Japan and, and China. The Dutch were important. Uh, they, uh, they were the ones that, that the, of, of the Westerners uh, that were trusted because they didn't care about uh, missionary work. They only cared about, uh, about trade. But uh, they <clears throat> were, were uh, forced to uh, once a year uh, 
uh, deliver a report on uh, what was ha what happened in the world, a so-called Fusetsugaki, uh, a report that that uh, informed the Japanese rulers uh, the the various um, happenings and the various developments in in Europe and and elsewhere, and this was an important um, uh, channel of information. It was so important that also. The, the, the Dutch were so important uh, with their information that a uh, so-called uh, Rangaku uh, developed uh, uh, the, the Dutch learning. It was called Dan because uh, Dan was an abbrevi abbreviation of Odanda, Odanda. So Dan uh, became the, the, the brief way of, of saying Odanda. And gaku means simply uh, learning. So Dutch learning, uh, uh, gaku. And, and uh, the Dutch learning <clears throat> included not only information about the rest of the world, but also specific information on, for instance, how to uh, uh, analyze the, the, the human body and, uh, and various other technical uh, uh, aspects and, and, and technical sides, technical um, uh, information that, that was very important. Also, when it came to uh, artillery, uh, military strategy, and, and so forth. Actually, during this period, uh, a third uh, Zen sect established itself, the so-called Obaku. Uh, this was established by, by Chinese monks in 1654. And it lived on and still lives on in, in, in although not very important. Um, and it also had uh, some practices that were different from Soto and, and Rinzai. One being that uh, in the Chinese way, the, the monks uh, ate together out of uh, common uh, plates. Uh, and they also, their temples had a more Chinese uh, structure or character, but more and more over the years, they of course um, adopted to the Japanese way of, of living and, and practicing their, their religion. Uh, the uh, Soto Shu or the Soto sect uh, gradually during this period lost some of its influence uh, and were uh, more focused on, on <clears throat> Uh, activities within their temples, whereas uh, the Rinzai became more uh, important. Uh, and this was in many ways um, the result of the work of a, a, a priest called Hakuin Ekaku. Uh, and after this, uh, the, the Rinzai sect was um, uh, more or less the, the Hakuin uh, uh, Zen sect. The Rinzai, uh, when Eisai, a monk called Eisai, introduced um, uh, Rinzai in, in the 13th century, he also brought with him uh, tea. And uh, so the, 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 and, and the, the um, tea ceremony, however, developed uh, a bit later. During <clears throat> the Tokugawa period, <clears throat> there were many things that happened. Uh, in the uh, in the world, uh, not least uh, the uh, European uh, nations became very powerful, and uh, Great Britain, uh, more or less, <clears throat> well, not more or less, but forced itself on China, and uh, and started um, with a very important trade later uh, developed into, in fact, a, a war, the Opium Wars. I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. <clears throat> but uh, oh, the, the isolation was efficient in, in, in one way, uh, th because it, it um, forced Japan to, um, uh, to a domestic development that was very uh, interesting in, in, in how it influenced the Chinese, uh, the Japanese culture. Uh, the shogun or the various shoguns, they forced the local lords to alternate their uh, stay in their lo localities and in Edo. And a system called Sanking Kotai uh, was introduced where all the 
local uh, lords uh, had to bring with them uh, large uh, numbers of, of people to serve them in Edo, but also where they had to um, leave their wives and daughters uh, in Edo as kind of hostages. But the, the constant travel between uh, the different uh, uh, local <clears throat> provinces and Edo uh, forced Japan to, to construct um, large uh, uh, road systems and also systems with, with uh, uh, inns that could um, uh, take care of the, the, uh, the large numbers of people traveling. Uh, so a system of inns were established uh, all over uh, the, the large uh, roads. And uh, this somehow connected Japan and became, it became a, a country where people uh, traveled a lot under uh, licenses, of course. You couldn't just walk around and, and move without uh, permission. But still, it was a, a, a period when, when Japan uh, developed uh, as, a, as a country sticking together thanks to uh, this sunken Kotai system. But in the end, <clears throat> the, the, um, the way of, of, of staying um, isolated was not uh, ver very uh, good. And in fact, uh, first of all, the, the, um, the techno technological uh, developments uh, really uh, showed that that uh, towards the end of, uh, or in the in, actually in the in the beginning of the nineteenth century, Europe was much more technolo technologically advanced than than Japan, and then when you had <clears throat> um, activities, European activity, the European powers moving all over the world to try to um, uh, trade and and establish their their themselves. Uh, here and there, uh, the, um, the the development also became very threatening, not least <clears throat> because uh, of the, the the way China was treated by the, by the British and the French, uh, and the the Dutch uh, they provided the Japanese with the information about how uh, China was treated, and this scared, of course, the the Japanese. Um, rulers very much and they, they debated how should we defend ourselves should we uh, cooperate with the <clears throat> invaders or should we uh, resist by trying to build our own uh, uh, a, a strong defense but they realized in the end that they couldn't um, uh, resist if they would try to uh, meet the the um, Europeans by force, they, then they would probably face the Chinese um, fate <clears throat> and, and completely and be completely destroyed. The <clears throat> what happened uh, towards the end of the uh, Tokugawa period was a confrontation between the self-sufficient uh, and complacent way of looking at your own nation and a power-hungry global environment. It was also a confrontation between domestic traditions, religions, philosophies, literature, and a Western supremacy, grounded in what you can, ask, you can ask yourself, but it was mostly military supremacy. And <clears throat> it was also uh, domestically a confrontation be between those who wanted to preserve uh, what was Japanese uh, and those who wanted to look at the uh, Europeans and, and uh, well, mostly Euro the Europeans and see uh, how they could uh, learn from, from, from them uh, in uh, restructuring uh, Japan. Uh, it was, of course, the, the, the Americans. <clears throat> the Opium Wars uh, was not only very destructive, but it was also a great shock to uh, China, of course, uh, but also to the Korean rulers and to, uh, to the Japanese rulers. In the end, <clears throat> the, the, uh, <clears throat> in 1853, the, the famous uh, black ships commanded by uh, 
the American Admiral uh, Perry uh, arrived in Japan. And uh, in the beginning, <clears throat> The, the, uh, the purpose of uh, the arrival was to not to open up uh, Japan for, for trade. At that time, China was the, the, the focus of the Americans. Uh, the Chinese uh, market and, and, and China looked very promising. And Japan was looked upon as, as well, relatively important, but not as important. And the main reason was to force the Japanese to allow the American ships to store uh, coal depots uh, in, very, in, in places and also allow them to on the way to China and from China to uh, uh, fill uh, the, the, um, uh, sh their ships with, with the water and, and, and other uh, important uh, things that they needed for the travel across the Pacific Ocean. But then <clears throat> once there, they, they, um, uh, they, they, they realized that Japan should also be open to trade. Uh, and the uh, demands shifted from just a limited way of, of asking for, for certain favors to simply uh, saying that Japan had to open up or otherwise they would use force. They came back in 18, the year after 1854 and managed to, to, um, to make the Japanese <clears throat> uh, open up a limited uh, way in the beginning. But this led to uh, domestic resistance, uh, uh, saying that we should not give in to foreigners this easily. We, we have to uh, resist, we have to defend ourselves. And the shogunate has, has show, sh clearly shown that it uh, cannot lead Japan. So uh, we need to um, restore uh, political power to the imperial house. And in 1868, during the period um, 1853, 1854 to 1868, there was this internal uh, discussion, uh, sometimes very violent, uh, but um, it ended with the forces uh, interested in, in re-establishing the political power to the emperor uh, to, uh, to be become victorious. And the Meiji restoration uh, occurred. <clears throat> but this was a period uh, after the Meiji restoration, uh, the, uh, the slogans of that time or the, the devices that the, the people uh, argued uh, went from uh, one called uh, Sonno Joi, uh, praise the uh, emperor and, uh, uh, and throw out the, the barbarians to uh, Bumme Kaika to praise or to, to, to uh, open up uh, civilization for, for to foreign influences. Um, <clears throat> And this very much, uh, it was a dramatic uh, change of the Japanese society. But it was also the start and the beginning of a new uh, generation, uh, the generation uh, that, uh, that was born in the years around and, and following the major restoration. One such example is the great novelist Natsume Sosaki, who um, uh, he was born in 1867 and died in 1916, but he wrote a number of, of, of very uh, important books. The most famous one, perhaps uh, Kokoro, uh, or the, the, the way of, of uh, or the soul of, of Japan or, or the, of a person. Uh, and it was very much influenced by, by um, by Western literature, but it was also a mixture, you can say, of Japanese traditional uh, way of uh, Japanese traditional way of thinking and a, a modern European way of thinking. Nasuma Soseki also, around uh, the turn of the century, uh, went to uh, England to uh, to study <clears throat> uh, European literature and Western literature and British literature. Uh, in, in more deeply, uh, 
but he was very disappointed with uh, what he saw in 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 Japan and he became very de depressed in fact and um, went back in in uh, I believe 1903 um, <clears throat> but it uh, one of his friends was uh, Masaoka Ishiki, uh, who, uh, he was also born in 1867, uh, but uh, Masaoka Ishiki is, is famous for um, <clears throat> reintroducing uh, uh, the, the classical poetry, but in a new way. Uh, up until this point, um, the uh, linked poetry uh, had been very popular where various poets had written uh, stanzas that were combined into long poems. The most important uh, stanza uh, was the first one called Hoku, which means uh, the first stanza. Uh, and um, also the, the, the Waka poetry from the Nara and Heian area, uh, era eras <clears throat> uh, was uh, structured uh, by having one poet uh, write um, a small uh, poem uh, in five, <clears throat> seven, five, um, it usually says syllables, but it was really uh, onji or jion or character reading, uh, readings. And the next, uh, <clears throat> Uh, poem, uh, a poet uh, adding a, a short poem structured on a seven, seven syllables, if you like. Um, and then they could go on for forever. Uh, but this was uh, first uh, structured in by a poet called Mas, um, uh, Maso Basho, who lived in the 17th century. He was born in 1644 and died in 1694. He said that we cannot go on forever and with po <clears throat> poets adding poems or stanzas, uh, uh, but we have to have a structure. So he said that we should do it in 36 stanzas, uh, where the first hoku, of course, was the most important, but then it followed rules that were quite complicated. What Masaoka Shiki did he said, <clears throat> since Hoku is the first uh, and most important stanza, it's a poem on its own, and uh, we should simply call it haiku. So he was the one who coined uh, the phrase haiku, and he was the, you can say, uh, origin uh, of uh, the very popular uh, poetry form called haiku. Although the that haiku form was, of course, based on centuries uh, of uh, traditions, uh, po poetic traditions. He was also the one that uh, restrict or, or revolutionized the, the Tanka uh, poetry, which is 57577. Uh, waka and Tanka are, are more or less the same, the structure the same way. And Waka is simply Japanese poetry and Tanka means short poetry. But main, most of all, he's famous for, for um, uh, in reintroducing or, or establishing haiku as a form, po poetic form. His name is interesting because um, it's called, uh, it's simply called shiki uh, most of the time. And uh, shiki <clears throat> is one way of pronouncing hototogisu. Hototogisu is uh, a kind of Japanese it's also Chinese, a bird um, or uh, a cuckoo bird, a Japanese cuckoo bird. It's not the, the regular cuckoo, but it has a diff another a sound, which poets in, in China and Japan have looked at uh, for centuries as being very beautiful. But it's also a bird that, that you can hear, but very seldom can see. But it's a bird that, that likes to sing so much that in the end, the legend says it coughs blood. Uh, but this is simply so because it has a red tongue. Uh, but uh, Masao Kashiki was um, uh, infected, or he, he, he died of tuberculosis, which was very common at that time. 
So he was coughing blood and he thought that was a, a, a suitable way of describing himself. So as a pen name, he took uh, the, the name Shiki. Another person that was <clears throat> born uh, just after the uh, major restoration or around that time was Nishida Kitaro. He uh, is interesting because he tried to mix uh, or he tried to use Western philosophy to explain Japanese religion, mostly Zen, uh, Zen Buddhism. He, he felt that Zen Buddhism was really the most uh, efficient way of, of gaining uh, religious experiences and uh, attaining some kind of uh, uh, enlightenment, uh, but uh, it didn't wasn't not enough to use the Buddhist method of, of simply uh, denying uh, expressions to explain uh, the experience or talk about emptiness or absolute absolute uh, nothingness and so forth, which he also used. Um, as a, a phrase or as phrases or as ways of explaining his, his philosophy. But what he did, he, he became very interested in, in, uh, uh, in Western philosophy, but he wanted somehow to explain the, um, the, his religious experiences and, and uh, the, what Zen was all about by using um, uh, Western philosophical terms. And he, he established a uh, so-called Kyoto School of Philosophy, um, using, which was a mixture, you can say, of Western philosophy and Zen Buddhism. There are many philosophers that are said to belong to this school, and, and some of them even deny that they belong to the school, but they have been using uh, the, the terms absolute nothingness and, and uh, other terms uh, that were used to describe uh, uh, Zen Buddhism. And somehow they have all uh, very much praised Nishida and, and therefore they have been uh, uh, said to belong to the Kyoto School. It's called the Kyoto School because he was a professor at the Kyoto University. He uh, <clears throat> has been criticized uh, after the war, especially, uh, and uh, others in the Kyoto School, because they have, or the, the, the critics say that they were somehow praising the Japanese militarism uh, and the Japanese way of, of forcing itself into the continent um, with military um, means. It's not really uh, true. Um, he was very critical of uh, the way the militarism took over Japan, but uh, he wanted to, um, he, he did not openly criticize uh, the, military, uh, the, the militarism, therefore uh, he was identified by uh, with it. So there's a uh, new trend, I think, in, in Western philosophy or in, among Western philosophers to look at Nishida as being a very interesting figure uh, in the Japanese religious and philosophical tradition. Um, and his philosophy was also not easy. It's not easy to read or understand. Uh, all the same, he has had an enormous influence on um, ja the mo modern uh, Japanese philosophy. One of his friends was another person born in the same uh, year, eight, 1870, uh, Suzuki Daisets. He <clears throat> uh, was uh, also extremely interested in, in Zen Buddhism and he um, went uh, in the, I think it was in, the, in early 20th century, he went to the United States to participate in, in a big conference there and somehow um, fell in love with, with the United States or, or found it interesting uh, important to um, to to uh, talk about Zen uh, in in that country, and he um, has been very much appreciated. His 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 writings have been very much appreciated by those who have been interested in Zen, not least the so-called uh, Beat Generation, um, 
Jack Kerouac and 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 others um, uh, who who uh, uh, became some, somehow became Zen uh, Buddhists themselves, or at least they became very very uh, interested in in Zen Buddhism. Then and, and uh, Suzuki Daisets has had an, an strong influence on uh, the way Westerners look at uh, Japan and, and Japanese traditions because of his writings. Uh, his most famous book is called the uh, um, Japan and uh, Zen, what is it called? A, um, Japan and, and Zen culture. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, somehow I lost the title, but uh, he is, he's quite important. One shouldn't forget, however, that <clears throat> during this period, uh, after the Meiji Restoration and the new Japan that emerged, uh, it was also uh, a time where women, although uh, being forced to, to live in, in traditional family structures, all the same, there was a, a time when they could express themselves in a different way that they, they couldn't uh, before the Meiji Restoration. One uh, typical example is Yosano Akiko, who uh, became very uh, well known and famous as a tanka poet. Um, she was married to uh, a, another tanka poet called uh, Yosano Tekkan, and uh, somehow, uh, where they worked together, but also somehow she became more uh, influential and famous than 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 he. And um, uh, so it is um, uh, an example of uh, early <clears throat> women poets uh, becoming influential in, the, in modern society. Uh, not, of course, yet on the same level uh, where in, when it comes to influence as, as male poets. But the first Japanese parliament uh, was very much based on uh, first of all, the, the constitution of 1889, the Meiji constitution, but it was also a, a, a period uh, or, or a phenomenon uh, which was influenced by, by Europe and, and other ways of, of structuring democracy uh, or parliaments. Uh, it was um, uh, the result of many of several years of, of carefully studying the best way of, of um, establishing a, a parliament. The uh, <clears throat> democratic traditions uh, <clears throat> uh, continued and, and uh, in parallel with a stronger and stronger uh, Japanese military. Uh, the uh, si first Sino-Japanese War in 1895 and 1894 and 1895 ended to everyone's surprise with a Japanese victory. And in 1895, in the um, Treaty of Shimonoseki, uh, the Japanese uh, gained a lot of new influence. Uh, for instance, uh, this is when um, uh, Taiwan uh, were uh, the, uh, the sovereign uh, Japanese sovereignty or the sovereignty over Japan, uh, Taiwan was was given through the uh, Treaty of Shimonoseki uh, to Japan. So um, Taiwan was a, a Japanese colony from 1895 to 1945. Uh, still, the the um, the, the way of, of waging wars were um, uh, not uh, infected or, or too much um, characterized by, by war crimes that, that uh, later happened, but it was a, a regular war where um, the Japanese used uh, smart tactics and, and simply defeated a, a, an enemy. Of course, one can ask what, what did the Japanese had to do. Why were they uh, in in on the continent? The the Sino-Japanese War were really uh, not uh, a war that took place in in uh, neither China nor Japan. It was uh, 
on the Korean Peninsula. And in a way, it was a war over dominance over the, the Korean Peninsula. It was later followed by the Russo-Japanese War. Again, uh, much of the focus was uh, how to uh, dominate uh, Korea. And again, uh, to everyone's surprise, Japan uh, became victorious in this war, uh, 1904 to 1905. Uh, <clears throat> it was a war that was devastating in many ways. Uh, it was a, a, the war, a war of the trenches, you can say, similar to the First World War. Uh, and the, the um, number of soldiers and, and, and deaths on both sides were enormous. So it had an, a, a, a huge influence on, on Japan when Japan finally defeated uh, Russia. And one could perhaps say that from this <clears throat> time, from 1905, um, Japan's uh, ambitions or hunger, if you like, for control over Korea and also more uh, than Korea on the continent uh, began. Uh, in 1905, Japan more or less took control over, over Korea. Uh, it later in 1910, in 1910, annexed Korea, in fact. But already in 1905, uh, Japan more or less uh, began uh, a ruling uh, Korea. The <clears throat> military uh, developments happened uh, in parallel to political developments, and you still had a political opposition and a political, um, various political forces also influenced uh, by Europe, also influenced by the various movements uh, in, uh, in Europe, socialism, communism, liberalism, uh, whatever. <clears throat> this also uh, uh, had some consequences in, uh, in Japan. Uh, this is a famous uh, incident called the High Treason Incident, uh, where uh, some, uh, a number of, of some 15, 20, perhaps more uh, people um, were said to plot murder of the uh, Japanese uh, emperor. They were um, very much influenced by, by socialist ideas, uh, although there were some, some Zen uh, Buddhists uh, also participating. And uh, it, it, they were um, <coughs> accused of, as I said, trying to kill the, the emperor and they were sentenced to death. Uh, it became somehow uh, um, an incident that, that uh, uh, divided uh, Japan, uh, but it was also uh, an incident that symbolized that now uh, the, the, uh, the future for socialists were not, uh, was not very bright. Uh, the, the authorities more and more uh, clamped down on, on, on anything that, that smacked of socialism. Still, uh, the following period after the death of the Emperor Meiji and the uh, birth or the, the um, when the period shifted to the Taisho period, there was a period between uh, during the Taisho uh, uh, Emperor's uh, rule, uh, 1912, 1912 to 1926, that had some, some democratic tendencies and so had some, some liberal ideas being influential and, and uh, sort of domestic stability. Um, and therefore it was, uh, has been termed or has been called the Taisho democracy. It was replaced <clears throat> by the Showa period uh, and uh, you can say that at the end of the Taisho democracy, the dark uh, period of modern Japan began. Uh, mostly so in, in the 1930s, uh, when you had uh, se several coup attempts uh, being staged and very often uh, inspired by, by various philosophers. One important philosopher was Kitaiki, uh, 
uh, who um, was said to be the inspirer of uh, a coup d'etat attempt in 1936. Uh, this uh, coup attempt uh, uh, upset the emperor very much. So he, uh, his opinion was that uh, the, the coup should be uh, stopped <clears throat> and the, the, the people involved in it should be punished. And it led to uh, several executions and not least uh, this uh, inf uh, influential philosopher Kitaikia was uh, executed in 1937. All the same, the, the movement within the uh, Japanese military, sp specifically within the army, uh, had um, started to, to um, uh, influence decision makers and they used force. Uh, they, they, on several occasions during the coup attempts, they, they had killed uh, prime minister, some ministers, some some um, important industrialists. They simply uh, wanted to use force in order to um, create a military dictatorship and also to uh, take over uh, not only uh, Korea, uh, Korea they already had uh, in Japanese hands, but Manchuria and, and the rest of China, in fact. Uh, this, the dark period, you can call it, uh, perhaps began with the, uh, the Russo-Japanese uh, war, but uh, definitely with the annexation of Korea in, in 1910 and the invasion of Manchuria and later the invasion of China, the attack on Pearl Harbor, and uh, the, uh, then you had the Pacific War, uh, which um, was, uh, to say the least, uh, very uh, destructive. Um, it, uh, of course, ended with the, um, the uh, destruction of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, in, um, uh, with, with the atomic bombs, but also uh, many other places in Japan were, were um, ended in, in being uh, dis destroyed. Uh, Tokyo, uh, not least Tokyo, which was, um, uh, very much uh, <clears throat> suffering from from uh, other ways of of bombing uh, the the phosphor bombs and, and the uh, spe spe especially in in the, in the early um, 1945 and there were plans to um, invade uh, Tokyo uh, but uh, the the calculation was that the 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 Allied troops would suffer. A great number of casualties, and of course the the atom bomb or the, the nuclear bomb had been just um, tested and and uh, shown to be efficient. This horrible weapon was then used to have a quick end to the to the war, and it did end. <clears throat> and this Takamura Kotaro is, is an interesting figure, uh, showing the way. People uh, shifted, and 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 um, uh, the way they they in the beginning when uh, Japan uh, was uh, becoming more and more aggressive, uh, began uh, writing in the, his case uh, poems praising the emperor, praising the attack on Pearl Harbor, from having before that been uh, very much amazed by European culture when he visited the United States and Europe. Paris, he wrote a famous poem on uh, when he praised the um, uh, Notre Dame of Paris uh, and uh, he um, other, uh, he was also creating fantastic um, uh, sculptures um, influenced by, by European sculptures. Um, but then <clears throat> after the war, he wrote again poems that said, okay, we were wrong. Um, we were um, somehow uh, led astray. Uh, now we have to praise uh, the, the new times. So very much in my view, Takamura Kotaro is the way the Japanese people shifted in their way of thinking. Uh, and um, from uh, darkness, from, from uh, yeah, darkness to a more a light way of, of accepting reality. <clears throat>
after the war, after the destruction uh, of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and the uh, end of the war, uh, the, the modern Japan <clears throat> had to be built. And of course, the, the occupation that the Allied occupation that, that followed 19, uh, from, from um, uh, August 1945 to, to 1952 uh, was a period when Japan had to change and had to become um, something else. And it was a period when uh, it was a confrontation again between various uh, ways of thinking of between self-glorification and total submission to uh, a, a military rule or and a, a religion really that was Japan. Japan was the religion, the, not only the emperor, but the emperor was part of a koktai or, or a national body that was Japan and Japan was a divine country. Uh, and uh, a confrontation between emperor worship, Japan as a religion, and, and the new liberal society, or the old liberal society. Uh, in effect, it was then, in short, a confrontation between ideologies. The Japanese had to begin a new kind of thinking. And they did. <clears throat> they did exactly what the uh, the new constitution of 1946, which was implemented in 1947, said uh, they should concentrate on economic development, they should concentrate on developing a democracy, uh, and they should um, move uh, into um, a period where they could contribute in a positive way to global developments. Um, but of course, the, the Japanese families uh, wondered uh, what is it in uh, Japan and J Japanese culture that um, we can still praise and what is it that we have to uh, uh, take a stand against. Uh, so there was very, also uh, much discussion on what is Japan, what is Japanese culture. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, in spite of this, the, the economic developments uh, went uh, from ashes to becoming uh, a, a Japanese wonder. Uh, the development was very quick from uh, 1952 to 1964. Just in, in 12 years, Japan grew uh, a, a enormous, in enormous um, pace, a rapid pace. And, and you, everywhere uh, people talked about the Japanese wonder. In 1964, the Summer Olympics um, uh, took place in, in Tokyo. And it was also the year when uh, elevated um, highways were, were finished in, in, uh, in, in Tokyo, for instance, and uh, when the bullet train Shinkansen was introduced. But as I said, uh, the emperor and the emperor system lived on after the, the uh, uh, the Second World War and the, the end of the war and, and the occupation. Uh, some felt uh, in, in, on the Western side or the Allied side that, that the emperor should be punished. Others, of course, uh, emphasized that we, sh we are not here to destroy uh, Japanese culture, we're here to destroy Japanese militarism. And therefore, uh, the emperor system uh, could um, remain in fact and if we take away the emperor system perhaps uh, it would be chaos uh, wh whether this was correct or not um, uh, can be debated but but uh, it, it is a fact that the emperor system has lived on and it has lived together with democracy and it has 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 worked um, but of course they the Japanese asked themselves what is it that we should be proud of and there are many things that they felt that they can be proud of. And this is one example, the so-called dakuyaki, uh, and also the um, uh, tea ceremony uh, as one example of a long uh, established tradition of Japanese culture. And Senno Rikkyu is the, the famous uh, tea master who was forced to commit suicide in, in um, 1591 by Toyotomi Hideyoshi the general that uh, ordered the invasion of Korea. 
it is <clears throat> not really clear uh, why he was um, ordered to uh, commit suicide. Perhaps he argued against uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi in some way, or, or I don't know. But the the, um, the 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 tragic fact is that he was committed. He was forced to commit suicide. And uh, <clears throat> people also look back and and said that well, Matsu Basho, the 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 famous poet of the seventeenth century is something we can be proud of. Haiku, thanks to Masaoka Shiki, uh, we can be proud of. And uh, this is the most uh, famous haiku uh, ever, I think. Furuiki ya kawazu tobikomu mizu no oto. Furuiki ya kawazu tobikomu mizu no oto. Um, the, the old pond, uh, a, a frog leaps into it, the sound of water. And this <clears throat> poem uh, was important because the, it was the fir first time that the sound of a frog was not the, the, the croaking of the frog, but simply something else. And of course, the image is that there's a quiet pond and suddenly you hear a bloop. And um, so quietly you can, you can uh, hear that there's something di um, diving into the, the pond. And of course, it's a, it's a frog. It's a very famous uh, poem, but it is the first um, uh, stanza in, in a, a, a long sequence of, of linked poetry. So it has become, it has established itself as, as a, a haiku, but it was from the beginning, the first part of a long poem. <clears throat> of course, Ikebana is another uh, cultural phenomena that uh, Japan and the Japanese have been very uh, proud of and also uh, have influenced the, um, after the war, especially uh, the rest of the world um, and appreciate it all over. Another phenomena <clears throat> that uh, somehow managed to live on was the budo or the, the martial arts uh, of, uh, of Japan. The allied uh, occupation uh, occupational authorities they for a while they uh, prohibited they banned um, martial arts because they thought that that would uh, foster and again uh, inspire militarism but after a while they allowed uh, them to exist and, and develop into modern forms and uh, the most famous ones are probably uh, kendo kudo judo and aikido uh, and you have them all over the world now, and they're very uh, much appreciated. The, the, um, the Japanese police uh, have, uh, the, or, the, or the police constables or the, or the police officers have to practice either kendo or, or judo. And all police stations have training facilities for kendo and, and judo. Uh, so it it's, has become a part of, in a way, a martial way of thinking, but it, it is also more than, the, it's, it's not anymore just uh, a, a way of, of symbolizing militarism, it's more using um, military traditions into uh, forming sports, modern sports that can be appreciated for something else. <coughs> I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> That Japan was divided into many um, um, provinces. And this has somehow lived on in uh, Japanese modern politics. Uh, since the first prime minister <clears throat> in 1885, um, Japan has had 99 uh, new uh, governments formed uh, by 63 prime ministers. And after the war, uh, since 1945, Japan has had uh, 34 uh, prime ministers uh, forming 56 different governments. <clears throat> and many of these uh, prime ministers or these faces have been leaders of, of various factions within the um, Liberal Democratic Party, which was formed in 1955 um, by a merger of the Liberal and the, the Democratic Party. Uh, and you talk about the 1955 uh, setup. Uh, 
because from 1955 until 1994, you had two important, uh, you had many political parties, but you had two important uh, parties, the Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP in power, and the Japan Socialist Party <clears throat> um, in um, opposition, the main opposition party. Um, and, and this uh, went on until 1994 when uh, there was a co coalition between eight political parties uh, uh, forming a new government without the LDP. But it didn't take uh, the LDP long to come back to power. And it did so <clears throat> by uh, forming a new government in 1995 together with the Socialist Party, which was mind-boggling because they had been opposing each other for so long. Uh, and also this structure uh, was so strange, in fact, that it didn't last very long. But all the same, in 1995, um, a, a, Jap a, a prime minister who was a socialist uh, took power <clears throat> over a coalition government together with the LDP. It later, uh, he later, the, the socialists later disappeared and uh, the li liberal uh, Democratic Party formed another government or other governments with the Kometo, the Buddhist inspired uh, party. <clears throat> the period 1964 to 1991 or the 1990s, of course, <clears throat> was also a period where Japan showed its modern strength and it, it's more um, civic or, or, or civilized uh, strength through uh, various um, inventions and, and uh, uh, gadgets and, and uh, products that, that were uh, appreciated all over the world. Uh, the Honda motorcycle or the Honda cars or the Toyota and the, the Sony uh, Walkman and so forth. And also Japanese food uh, became very popular uh, all over the world. Um, sushi is now a, 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 a household uh, word uh, everywhere. And uh, there are, uh, for instance, in, in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, the capital of Sweden, <clears throat> there are sushi restaurants all over. Um, and the um, same, I think, in, in, in all uh, cities all over the world. So the influence has been there, but it's a quiet influence in a way. Uh, very appreciated products, but it's not a, a way of, of trying to take over the world. It's simply a way of, of, of uh, creating uh, good products. And of course, the, the, the bullet train <clears throat> has continued to develop into new, uh, uh, new forms and more and more efficient. Uh, and, and they have, in, in their turn, they have in, inspired uh, fast trains all over the world. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the economic success ended with the burst of the economic bubble in the early 1990s and a period of some more uh, negative kind uh, developed. <clears throat> uh, if not a depression, uh, it was at least uh, a, a gloom that, that uh, uh, began in, in Japan with the uh, economic, uh, the burst of the economic bubble. But more so perhaps <clears throat> in 1995, <clears throat> the, the uh, earthquake, uh, a, a very destructive earthquake struck Kobe and Kobe was considered to be uh, safe from, from, from earthquakes. Of course, there's no place in Japan that is safe from, uh, from earthquakes. It's the most seismic uh, active uh, country in the world, I think. But Kobe was still uh, considered to be relatively safe and, and that um, earthquakes would not ha happen in Kobe. Uh, but it did in 1995. And the interesting thing is that uh, it showed that the old structures, uh, the old buildings uh, did not stand uh, an earthquake of this kind that came directly below, with the epicenter below uh, Kobe. Uh, 
uh, or very close to it. <clears throat> but the new buildings uh, were not destroyed. So this was a lesson that uh, really uh, was important and it proved uh, that there are ways of, of structuring buildings and the Japanese are very good at that, uh, that can withstand even the most destructive earthquakes. 1995 was also a period uh, that <clears throat> was shocking in, in other ways. It was the uh, sect, uh, a Buddhist sect from the beginning, but it became, uh, I don't know how to classify it, a crazy sect called Om Shindikyo uh, that uh, were planning to kill everyone that did not belong, belong to the sect. And they uh, instigated or they, they, they um, uh, were behind the um, the Sarin incident in uh, March twenty March twenty incident in nineteen ninety five where people in the uh, Tokyo subway died uh, twelve or thirteen people died from the Sarin attack and and thousands were injured. This uh, they managed to do uh, without being <clears throat> discovered. The police had been looking at them, but they didn't uh, imagine that, that uh, things of this kind could, could, uh, could happen. And this was a big shock to the whole Japanese society. Uh, and uh, it, it took many years before they could um, uh, somehow handle this. But of course, the, the, uh, it had some, some, the effect also that all the leaders of this sect in the end, um, after many years of, of court proceedings, were um, sentenced to death. <clears throat> um, adding to the uh, negative ways of, of, of thinking um, were the prospects of the Japanese population declining, as it has started to do uh, since uh, at least uh, 2015. Uh, uh, the peak was perhaps uh, at 127 million. I think now it's uh, below 126 uh, uh, million people. Uh, and um, uh, if it can continue, uh, probably not as low as, as this chart uh, shows uh, down to, um, uh, well, perhaps to 70 million in, in, uh, in 2095. But uh, it might uh, shift uh, its, its, um, the way it moves uh, later. But it, it is a fact that the Japanese population is declining at the moment. Whether this is uh, destructive for the economy or not is a different question, so I don't know, maybe not. Uh, but it, it adds to Japan being described as a, a country in decline, which is definitely not the case. Uh, one example of that is the number of, of Nobel Prizes that uh, Japan and Japanese researchers and others have been given since 1949, when the first Nobel Prize was given to a, a Japanese physicist. Uh, they have received uh, 28 uh, Nobel Prizes, or 25 if you count the ones uh, that are, are um, received by, by uh, Japanese uh, citizens who are still Japanese citizens. Three of them uh, have been, uh, have become uh, citizens of other countries. For instance, uh, Kazuo Ishiguro, uh, the um, Nobel uh, laureate in, in Japanese literature, who uh, moved to um, Great Britain, I think, in, in when he was five years old or so. <clears throat> so Japan is very much uh, despite the negative uh, incidents and, and uh, tendencies, a country where creativity very much uh, is a basis for what is happening uh, and influence, influencing the, the modern uh, economy. <clears throat> it is also uh, Japan, the modern Japan is also a time where uh, women become more and more uh, important. And uh, the former uh, Prime Minister Abe Shinzo emphasized the importance of having uh, women participating in, in the society. It, um, it is not changing uh, as fast or as rapid as 
the plan was, but it's still uh, Japan is uh, the uh, this social structure of Japan and uh, the influence of women. Uh, the social structure is changing and the influence of women uh, is growing, definitely. Um, perhaps not uh, as fast as, as many wish. <clears throat> In, in, if you want to sum up, um, since the end of <clears throat> the war, Japan has had at least 75 years of peace and democracy. Um, it has developed um, in ways that exactly the way, the way that, that the Allied um, op uh, occupation uh, or, uh, or the Allied, <laughs> um, what is it, the, the occupational forces wanted or, or were the the, uh, with the globe actually, with the, or the world wanted to see Japan develop into a, a country that uh, was peaceful and uh, where the democracy was solid and where Japan could contribute in a peaceful and democratic way to the rest of the world, be a good global influence. And uh, this is actually true. This has happened uh, in spite of all the various aspects of, of development of modern Japan. But still, it is criticized, Japan is criticized by, by some of the uh, neighboring countries. And they point at uh, the fact that Japan has not apologized for what has happened. But then you should look at <clears throat> uh, the, the fact that Japan has apologized. Um, if you analyze how many times uh, uh, Japanese representatives uh, on, on the level of emperor and prime minister has apologized uh, in, in ex expressing the words remorse and or heartfelt apology. The emperor has done so in 1984, 1990, 1996, 2020. And uh, the prime minister on a number of occasions after those apologies, sometimes other politicians have said that this apology doesn't mean anything. And therefore, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, those criticizing Japan have said that, you see, uh, they didn't, didn't mean what they were saying. But I think that once they have, as a, as a prime minister, as an emperor, apologized, one should actually uh, take that into account. It is an apology that was, was meant. And since Japan is a democracy with freedom of speech, um, others can say whatever they like. But I think that the prime minister, uh, various prime ministers, uh, not least, have been very specific. <clears throat> For instance, uh, before that, also others, um, the chief cabinet secretary, Kato Koich, is a representative also of others apologizing and he said about the uh, so-called uh, comfort women uh, in 1992 that the government again would like to express its sincere apology and remorse to all those who have suffered indescribable hardship as so-called wartime comfort women irrespective of their nationality and or place uh, or, or, or place of birth and <clears throat> On the 50th anniversary of the end of the war, the uh, Prime Minister Murayama, he was the socialist Prime Minister I mentioned earlier, that uh, was uh, sh uh, for a brief period, a, a Prime Minister in the coalition with the LDP. He said, Japan through its colonial rule and aggression caused tremendous damage and suffering to the people of many countries, particularly those of Asia in the hope that no such mistake will be made in the future, I regard in a spirit of humanity, these irrefutable facts of history and express here once again, my feelings of deep remorse and state my heartfelt apology. I don't think it's possible to be more clear than that. Um, of course, then others have said, <clears throat> well, he was a socialist prime minister. He had a different uh, agenda. And later others have not uh, really meant that. But in fact, uh, Abe Shinzo, the prime minister, last prime minister, who has been described as, as being a, a, a rightist or very much uh, a conservative, he has repeated that he stands behind this 
this apology. So I think one should actually uh, take it for what, what it is. It is an apology. Of course, I think um, it would be <clears throat> good if, if, if Japan and, and China, for instance, and, and Korea could uh, move on and, and leave history behind. Uh, and I think that there are tendencies now, in spite of the criticism, that this is the case. Uh, I think uh, both China and Japan have realized that it's better to cooperate uh, as much as they can than to create a, 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 an atmosphere of conflict. And the same, I think, goes for uh, South Korea and Japan. Uh, I think North Korea is, is a, uh, another uh, story, but, but I think it's not impossible that you will see some rapprochement between uh, North Korea and Japan in the years that come. I thank you for listening to this rather long lecture. And um, again, thank you for, for um, taking your time.